А сейчас я хотел бы передать слово нашему коллеге Сергею Анатольевичу Рогинко, который представляет, с одной стороны, Институт Европы Российской Академии Наук, с другой стороны, Финансовый университет при правительстве Российской Федерации, ну и с третьей стороны, он является руководителем подкомитета по климатической политике Торгово-Промышленной Палаты. Сергей Анатольевич, пожалуйста. Wonderful. I'm not going to speak about the Chamber of Commerce because the Chamber of Commerce is also an organization representing large businesses and our subcommittee on climatic positions actively works in this area been more particular in recent couple of years when there were questions about risks in the line of uh, state regulation and uh, in a line of the federal law related to the state regulation of the greenhouse gases. We are going to continue this work in the future. And following the example of RSPP, we are going to have a special assembly in our Chamber of Commerce. Without copying everything that has been previ previously said, I would like to speak about one very specific problem, which is whether the Paris Agreement is a driver for low carbon growth and low carbon development for Russian economy. As it is well known, there are two types of drivers, and you can see them on this screen. If the first type involves national obligations to reduce greenhouse pollution, which naturally are being translated and broadcasted into corporate obligations to reduce the emissions, the second type is fully for corporations and it is concentrated in the article 6.4 of the paris agreement it's the project reduction of the corporate sources which are transferred into internationally transferable mitigation outcomes and uh, these itmos are the international products, they are being accounted for corporate obligations of the buyer and national obligations of the country buyer. The main requirement is providing general reduction of global emissions. Basically speaking, how can this be provided? Everything is very simple. The story is very simple. Absolute global reduction is a sum of absolute country national reductions. So logically speaking, the topic of sales or, or the ITMO, which provides the global absolute reductions should be from those countries where the obligations are being adopted the NDC obligations as absolute national reductions. In other words, roughly speaking, this scheme is very simple. ITMO on uh, Article 6.4 is an absolute reduction, sale or purchase, and the result providing the general global reduction of emissions. Okay, let's step back a little bit. Where did we get these marketable mechanisms in the Paris Agreement? Why were they developed in the beginning? And what stopped those developers to take the same project mechanisms from the Kyoto Protocol and reproduce them in the new con construct of the Paris Agreement? I can say what was standing on the way. The thing is that how the Kyoto Protocol existed and its market mechanisms, it was not fully providing global reduction of emissions. Being uh, in particular in project mechanisms, they had two types of them. The first one was 
projects of joint resolutions GIs, which been providing real reduction of emissions because they have been conducted by companies and reductions have been generated only in those countries where the absolute mode of national limitations for emissions have existed. So every generated tone have been taken in consideration in the asset of that country which was buying and the asset of the corporation that was buying it. However, there was another construct, so-called clean development projects, clean development mechanisms, CDM. These are projects which have been realized in the developing countries where the national pollutions have not been limited by anything and activations in this direction have been, well, these projects have not led to any reduction of global emissions and they have mixed up those who've been taking the accounting. In addition to that, these projects were following the principle of learning by doing. So in the process of creating these mechanisms, it was clearly understood that these projects will not lead to any reductions, but with time, being a, some carrot for developing countries, these uh, projects will give them possibility to develop potential in creating such projects. And a third of all, they will become a certain stimulus for developing countries to adopt more specific obligations in the future and would enter the regime of the absolute limits or absolute emission reduction. In addition, in these projects, there were serious problems. And first of all, low transparency in result of which number of reductions uh, given uh, to the market by these projects was significant and practically it has killed the market of European system of trading the emissions. It happened that prices were dropping down to two, three euro cents per ton. Naturally speaking, no global participants, they didn't want to repeat this negative experience. This is why they have fixed principle that reductions that will be sold, they should lead to general global reduction of emissions. But what happened in the result at that moment of time when the Paris Agreement was adopted? Who was the seller in a group of countries with absolute national limitations? Sellers were Russia, Ukraine, and Brazil. Brazil was the biggest of the developing countries which have adopted these absolute national emission limits. So Brazil, Costa Rica, and uh, some other smaller players. For them, this mechanism did work. They have increased their ambitiousness and they started moving from relative uh, numbers to absolute numbers of reductions. Who were buyers? Well, everything is known. Who are the buyers? European Union, Japan, and United States in recent years. However, the negotiation process followed a very strange uh, technology. Well, developing countries, they have undertook an obligation not to reduce these national emissions and to have a full freedom, but a possibility to sell something in the framework of uh, their reductions or simply speaking, getting money on the new markets. Well, they did like this particular fact. That's why somewhere uh, beginning from Katowice or even before that, the whole set of proposals in the Article 6 have included a big number of ideas coming from developed 
countries uh, who tried and still are trying to implement very strange tools for trade, including tool which is called co-benefits adaptation. And as we have learned, some additional advantages can be discovered there, which can be sold in the global market for the same money as the like absolute re emission or the asset like emissions avoidance. This is a wonderful thing. In other words, any country can create the dirty scenario of economical development with any great emissions, take it as a basic one, and then compare it with existing numbers with business as usual and sell it on the market as emission avoidance. And last but not the least, it's the requirements for a CDM acceptance on the global market, basically speaking. And I'm not going to elaborate about the volumes of possible need or demand or forecasts, but they are not big yet. And generally speaking, they are not above 500 or 800 million tons. But that addition, which create, which is created by these CDM projects, will cover all this need with the guarantees. And for real reductions, for new projects, there will be no place on the global market. <clears throat> In addition, there are interesting principles as being disconnected from the participation in the uh, mechanisms like NDC, which is predictable, and the mechanisms of uh, geographical quotas. <clears throat> this is also has been verbalized very seriously, by, but why do we call it a marketable mechanisms? Because markets, they buy where they're cheaper and where the product is better. So what do we get in result of this situation? And let's speak about how the projects uh, are planned to be limited. Namely speaking, they shouldn't take all the limitations for the whole project period, discount the transferred reductions, do more conservative baseline. What is a conservative baseline? For example, non-connected to business as usual, when they get ready for any project document during the reduction, but towards the best available technologies, which immediately cuts the delta significantly if it doesn't remove it completely. And finally, provide limit for the purchase of the ITMO by specific countries and prohibit banking of ITMOs, transferring them from period to period. So, what do we have to state in this situation? We wanted to have a better situation. We wanted to create a better mechanism than Kyoto Protocol mechanism, but in result, it became much worse. What do we see? Getting away from the objectives of stimulating the absolute reduction of emissions. This mechanism will not stimulate global emission reduction violation of global accounting of emissions, the loss of connection between ITMO project reductions and global numbers of greenhouse emissions, and finally, reduction of attractiveness of any works in real projects which reduce the emission. What can be done between Russia and EU together? Let's think that there is a common, both in Russia and European Union, understanding of uh, absolute global reduction of emissions. This need is understandable. And European Union understands it. And uh, European Union sp seriously speaks about it. 
for example, about trans-border uh, carbon tax, which has been promoted by them very seriously, is being positioned as a measure that has to facilitate to reduction of greenhouse emissions outside. Wonderful. Let's think about stimulation of absolute global emission reduction within Russian projects. Let's take them into consideration while buying good quality of Russian tools because Russian reductions are real reductions. And uh, in the country which follows the obligations of national limits. So this is a global reduction. Everything which can be drawn to you but in some other countries, in the best case, could be just a beautiful picture. And in the worst case, could be 100% fake. So what would we would like to propose? We need bilateral initiatives in formation of real projects of emission reductions. We need to have a, a portfolio approach. We need to have several pilot portfolios or projects in emission reductions, including in uh, manufacturing of products which are delivered to the EU. This approach has been demonstrated by the EU some time ago when they have introduced a similar measure like upstream emissions reductions. It's a measure which is applicable to the oil industry. In other words, they mean that European companies, oil processing companies, they can facilitate to the emission reductions in the upstream where the oil is being manufactured. But due to the fact that there was COVID-19, production has dropped, emissions have dropped, this initiative has not been completed. But we do want to hope that there will be a continuation of this initiative in the future and other similar initiatives will be continued. Thank you very much for your attention. Sergei Anatolievich, thank you very much. It was an important topic, especially the topic of bilateral initiatives between EU and Russia on emission reductions. I think that within our project, we are going to look at these topics.